In the last few videos, we've spoken about the geometric interpretation of least squares. So the idea here is that we imagine that we have some sort of column space of our independent variables, which is the column space of our matrix of our independent variables x. And the idea is that we're trying to essentially get as close to our vector of our dependent variables y, given that we're constrained to lie in this space. And as we spoke about in the last video, we can think about least squares as being represented by two different steps. The first step is to identify the vector mu hat, which is essentially the orthogonal projection of y onto the column space of x. And the idea with mu hat is that it lies as close to y as possible in terms of the Euclidean distance, and hence it is the best we can do given that we're constrained to lie within that particular space. So the first step of least squares is to identify the vector mu hat. And we're going to talk about how we do that in the next few videos. The second step is essentially to then deconstruct mu hat in terms of the actual components of x. So we're going to write mu hat in terms of x. And it's this that we're going to talk about in this video. So remember when we spoke about our column space of x, we sort of can imagine it being spanned by sort of p different vectors, essentially one vector for every column in the matrix, assuming that the matrix actually has full column rank, I should say. So imagine the circumstance where we have two independent variables. Let's say we have a constant, which I'm going to represent by the vector x1, and then we have some other vector of independent variables, which is called x2. Then we can think about the sort of span, space which is spanned by these two vectors as being a 2D space. So you can sort of already see the analogy with this plane here, which I've drawn abstractly. So the idea here is that we've already identified the vector mu hat. And now what we'd like to do is we'd like to write this in terms of x1 and x2. Well, that's easy enough to do, right? We can sort of think about it in terms of the various constituent components. And it turns out that the sort of quantities of x1 and x2 which, which we require are those which are given by the least squares estimates of the parameters. So the amount of x2 we required is beta 2 hat times x2 and the amount of x1 we require is sort of beta 1 hat times x1. So we can sort of think about mu hat as being the sum of these two vectors which is the sort of sum of going along here and then going up here. Hence, we can think about mu hat as being equal to beta 1 hat times x1 plus beta 2 hat times x2, where x1 and x2 in this example are the column vectors of those two particular independent variables. And if we were to write this a little bit more compactly, we can just write this as x, where x contains both x1 and x2 as its columns, times beta hat, where beta hat now is a two by one vector of the estimates or the least squares estimates of the parameter vector beta. So what we've derived in this video is that assuming we have full column rank, so what does that actually mean? It means that we don't have any perfect multicollinearity, then there is only one way to make up that um, particular vector mu hat, and it's equal to x times beta hat. And I appreciate the fact that I haven't actually explained why it's beta 1 hat times x1 and why it's beta 2 hat times x2, but I don't really want to go into the details too much just to say that it is equal to the sum of those two components.